One of the gifts of the shutdown was meeting Danielle through Christy Jones. And as we began to have conversations, I just knew that I had met somebody who was changing my life for the better. Danielle, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to Simply Sarah. Thank you for having me, Sarah. And oh my goodness, I remember when we first met, it was this instant recognition and here we are. And here we are, exactly. Mm -hmm. I had um, just finished publishing a, a, my third book and at that point was doing a book signing at the house, just inviting some friends in. And Christy said, can I invite some other friends of mine? And I said, of course, Christy, and <laughs> in you and Alain walked and absolutely my life has been changed for the better as mm -hmm. have so many other people. Friend, share with me how you got to where you are right now in your life. Okay, we have 10 hours? Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I would just say this resilient, this resilience in my soul, yes. knowing that in spite of the environment I grew up in, in spite of the programming, in spite of some of the early painful childhood experiences that I experienced from back home in Haiti to the US, I just knew in my soul that I was met for greatness yes. and that I was met for higher service. Mm -hmm. and, and then I became unstoppable, Sarah. Mm -hmm. And I just became like water. Things will come and somehow I was just navigating through it. And I knew it wasn't by my own power because I had seen um, situations where people when, were not able to come up. So mm -hmm. I knew I had tapped into, I will say, we all have the power. Yes. The power of our soul, the power of, of God within us. But I knew since a little child, I was always calling into that mm -hmm. power. So I could see how that had helped me navigate through whatever situation came to my life. Yes. And, and here we are. Mm -hmm. And here we are. And here we are. I love that you speak about how you were able to see for yourself that there was something different and the other people who had gone through very similar, painful, devastating even trauma had not come back up, that they were surviving, but they weren't pushing into the possibility of what could be. What is the difference in perspective for somebody who has gone through trauma and who is um, not seeing that there is any other possibility than to live with the story of for lack of a better, more eloquent way of saying it, I'm damaged from this point on. What's the difference between that and where you are, friend? That's a great question, Sarah. Honestly, I've always said this in different situations. I'm like, I don't know how they do it. I couldn't do it without God. Yes. And and, and it wasn't for me just a God far away. Or, Right. You know, even even though I had learned some of that growing up, but I had to make God personal. Mm -hmm. For me, I needed to call upon a higher power. Yes. There's no way, no how I could have come out of some of the sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. I, there's absolutely, Sarah, my life would have ended back in Haiti. I just knew it. It was too much for a little child to bear. So for me, even as a little child, I kept calling. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was my angel. Maybe it was Jesus. At this point, I don't, I don't care. Just come. <laughs> Whoever is available, just come. So yeah. I was just calling. I was just calling, and I was unstoppable. So to me, the difference is, yes, there are modalities. Yes, I understand conventional therapy, all of that. They serve a purpose. Um, but but. Um, what I've found is tapping into your deeper self, mm -hmm. which is God within, or if you within the religious context, you can or spiritual spirituality, you can say Christ within or whatever you want to call it. But mm -hmm. it's the essence of your being, 
yes. that must rescue you. Yes, that eternal part, right? I believe right. that we are eternal beings experiencing life here on earth. That's part of my own philosophy that I have come to understand. It was a theologian who actually shared that with me at one point, And I thought, huh, and I sat with it for probably two months, just kind of playing with, is that really what I believe? And mm -hmm. even from a child, young child myself growing up in Africa, believed that there was this eternal part, that there was this life after. And so it wasn't difficult also then to be able to see that if there is a genesis, if there is a beginning, that there could be even for me life before, right? So that was kind of my coming into this space of understanding for myself. And again, on Simply Sarah, we're not trying to convince anybody of Absolutely. any stance on anything, right? Um, we are providing, educating, we are empowering, we're encouraging, we're gifting energetic tools for people. And in this space, part of my energetic tool is to understand that um, there is this eternal peace. And mm -hmm. what I'm experiencing here and now is that the present, but yet we have this peace that is memory. And the mm -hmm. memory part can have these hooks attached to them where I hook back in. And honey, I'm just going to share with you a story from this morning that just so perfectly, <laughs> so perfectly illustrates this. There is this beautiful plant that's behind me and I had it in the windowsill so it could get better sunlight. And right. I was just, you know, up this morning and, and had gotten dressed and was getting ready for the day barefoot, which is very yes. typical for me in the morning, actually at lots of different times in the day. <laughs> and I move it out of the windowsill, not understanding that one of the vines is attached, it has wrapped itself around something less. And gravity still works. That's and it right. fell around. <laughs> and one foot was flat. So far, so good, because no glass can get underneath it. The other foot is not. And I stood there and I thought, what are my options, right? I have to, I need to move the glass. I need to not get cut. I need to be taking care of myself. Was able to do all of that. Everything is fine. And it wasn't an heirloom. All is well, right? <laughs> 20 minutes later, my mind has hooked back into, you moved the plant and it, that piece dropped and there was glass everywhere. So I just used that this morning as a, and I had to have a conversation with that. I chose to have a conversation with that because right. I can allow the rest of my day to be, huh, I dropped something. What does that mean about my day? Right. Yes, I do look for meanings and things. Today, it just meant that gravity still works, right? So how is it that you are <laughs> able to look at these hooks and talk to them differently or have them not shape your right now? Mm. Again, I, I realized that it's developing developing that deeper. Well, this is how I see it, Sarah, right? Um, we came here on planet Earth mm -hmm. and immediately as soon as possible, we are giving an identity yeah. based of country of origin, based of race, based of geographically where you are located, an identity within the family, you know, construct, and this is how we do things and, you know, and all of that, even though those are well-meaning individuals in our lives, even in society, as yeah. far as everybody knows, they are doing something positive. They're doing their best. And in that, it covers up the essence mm -hmm. of who you are, yeah. you know? But because you've identified yourself so long mm -hmm. with the different identities that have been put upon you, mm -hmm. you, have, you had completely forgotten who you were, right? Or actually, what what had brought you forth? Mm. And 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 I would say the the the, um, the illusions of self is so convincing mm. that now it does require an amount of that that you exert some 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 power, some willingness. Yes. And yes. Um, the way I kind of see it is that 
and, and, and this is why not a lot of people do it. They'll rather wear the mask. It's just so much more comfortable. They'll rather be that portray that image and 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 and, and give to people what they expect of them. It's just so much easier. And that's what most people do. And I understand because that's it's comfortable. You know, you get that 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 recognition, you get that approval, you're doing well in school or all that. You know, you get that accolade in, and, you know, you're moving up the ladder and yes, oh, you get the house and you get the dog and the cat and all of the, these expectations, not that we shouldn't have them, but I think in the midst of that, we had forgotten. Not mm -hmm. only have forgotten, but we have forgotten what we had forgotten. Yes. So it's a deep level of unawareness of mm -hmm. who we are and what we came to do because we are conforming. That brought me to this scripture in the Bible and you don't have to be Christian, but it's just so relevant. It's, and it says that, do not conform, right? Mm -hmm. Do not conform. So, uh, so I believe is in, in my life and what mm -hmm. had brought me here, as you were asking this question, is this mm -hmm. constant reminder mm -hmm. Constant reminder, okay, of knowing or reminding myself that, Danielle, yes, appreciate the illusion, respect the illusion, mm. respect it, but don't forget who you are. Mm. And that's a constant reminder, Sarah, because everything is meant for you to forget. Yes. Yeah. I remember people talking about when they put televisions into psychiatric wards that the amount of medication from my understanding went down along with a whole bunch of other things and they didn't need to have as many games at it, didn't need to be, have as many whatever, right? Activities because the television just allowed people to be able to be in a different place and have different experiences. And obviously this platform uses that as well. Um, and so there are educational pieces out there. There are positive things speaking into your soul. And when you spoke so eloquently about do not be conformed, I began to think about, first of all, jello, and you put jello into a mold, mm -hmm. and it conforms to the mold. And then I thought, what else could it look like for it to not conform? And I thought, well, that'd be kind of messy to have the jello out and about. Mm -hmm. And then I love the, your illustration, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and then the image came to me of conforming inside of that mold is ice. Mm -hmm. that being transformed still with exactly the same DNA, right, is the steam. Mm -hmm. So the ice is water, the steam is water in different forms. They're exactly the same in their construction. They're different in terms of how the molecules move. Mm -hmm. Inside of the ice, the molecules do move very, very, very slowly depending on how cold it is. Right. And as steam, they move so much faster, lifting them up out of the mold, still being their true essence. And I uh, just appreciate what you said, because that for, that visual that came to me um, is one that is really helpful for me today to understand that we're not giving up who we are. That's right. We are becoming more active in who right. we are. Right. And now I want some jello. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> What's your favorite flavor, Danielle? Oh, well, as a little child, let me see. Um, what the, the, I think strawberries. Strawberries. Yes. <laughs> Mine was also red. It was cherry. And no, it was maybe it was cherry. Yeah. It was <laughs> definitely red. <laughs> exactly. Definitely red. Definitely had the red dye number five or whatever in it. So, <laughs> yes. Wow. Speaking of food and spiritual food, what are some of the things that you choose to feast on when you are when you are in places of wanting to grow and expand? And I'm just going to give you a moment to think about that as I share with our incredible audience that Danielle is somebody who um, is one of the few people in my world who really understands how to go about a healthy fast and fasting, not just food, but lots of different things. 
and how it always propels her forward in her own life and how I've seen this time and time again. Um, so when you are ready to grow and to feast spiritually, what are some of the things that you choose to, to push into, friend? Uh, absolute water. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually on a seven-day water fast. Mm. And today is day seven, and I get to eat tomorrow. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> I'm so, so excited to eat. But honestly, Sarah, it's, it's water. In the beginning of my journey, uh, I started with, it's, it, it, it's funny, Sarah, because I grew up in Haiti. Meat and animal flesh, we didn't think about it. It was cultural. Yeah. We, just, we just feast on that. I, if you gave a Haitian person a meal without meat, that was considered highly disrespectful. So you can understand, you can understand that that's, that's what I grew up knowing. So naturally, I just, I eat meat, animal flesh, right? Naturally. But, I, but, but then as I started to grow in my spiritual journey, mm -hmm. I started to realize I don't care for meat. Mm -hmm. I, I, as I as I started to to tap into my my essence and and my authenticity, and and removing layers of conditioning, I realized I really don't care for all that meat. Yes. And then I started to move into pescatarian, and I did that for a while. Vegetarian, I did that for a while. I had to give up dairy because dairy just just broke up with me because I actually love dairy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> By the time I was 25, Jerry was like, girl, no, my, my, my digestive system, inflammation, all type of issues. I, I tried to carry on for as long as possible, then I had to give up dairy. So, mm -hmm. and at one point, I just realized I, I, I thrive on, on natural foods. Yes. And, and in the process, I shed 60 pounds. So I'm like, okay. This looks good. This is working. And yeah, it's working. And 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 so, and there were a period of times when I've done the Daniel fast and mm -hmm. anything that could that require less cooking, less cleaning, less. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, Sarah, because I realize you know, as a mother and entrepreneur, mm -hmm. and yes. and all of the roles that I fulfill, cooking is actually quite <laughs> a, a part time job. It is. So there were times when I felt like God, you know, my inner self, my inner being was calling me to that um, place of surrender and, mm -hmm. and deeper healing. And, and, and there were times that I had just done fruits and vegetables. I'd done that for 40 days. Mm -hmm. I had done the, the Daniel fast in the Bible, which I like. And that's why I started to learn how to um, cook legumes and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And in the process, you know, the Holy Spirit kept guiding me to a better way to eat, better way to eat. Mm -hmm. But in recent years, I found so much. I love to eat, Sarah. I'm actually a little bit greedy. Pray for me. But I love to eat. <laughs> but I also love to fast. I feast and I fast. It's just that beautiful balance. It is. Yeah. Yes. And, 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 and the rewarding that comes from that. There were moments, Sarah, I would just sit and just be silent. Mm -hmm. And I knew things were things were happening. It was just that 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 yes. direct mm -hmm. information. Mm -hmm. I didn't know them in words, and just this inner working and and things were moving from my spiritual body, my physical body, my yes. atmospheric body. I could feel it, I gave a better access to spirit to do what it needs to do. Some of the times it was things that I was like, girl, you need to stop it, like a nice little rebuke. I'm like, okay, okay, daddy, okay. Yes. You know? Yes. So, yes. yes, it's a beautiful balance between feasting mm -hmm. and fasting. And, and for the most part, I we don't consume heavy foods because right. we, we, we do see the difference. Mm -hmm. Certain type of foods awaken certain type of wounds or memories. I don't know how that works, but it's the energy and the animal, how, the, how that animal, the process that animal had gone through mm -hmm. when it come to your, to your plate, for example, um, and how that food was processed and being compromised and it's in front of you. 
you know so for us it was just like there's enough energies around that i need to I have to deal with i don't have to yes. add more thing in my plate so <laughs> i have to choose clean foods yes. clean water <laughs> yes so do you choose to filter your water then danielle yes we filter our water all right beautiful yes. and i really do love the two sides of feasting and fasting because if we go back and look at the ancients they did all of that they would be in huge community feasting together, enjoying, celebrating, right. uh, being together, singing songs that they all knew. And as we come into the holiday season, for some people, that's still part of their tradition of singing together and right. having feasts and whether the feast, whatever the feast happens to be, um, vegan or not, all of the different things of being together, right? That togetherness. And there's an energy that goes along with that. And that energy can be so good for our souls and so satisfying and maybe even a touch of, of the afterlife, right? The togetherness and the, the celebrating. But there's also the other side of this of being truly quiet mm -hmm. and not to the point of um, being silent because we're mad and we don't want to upset anybody else. It's not about that. It's about a silence that allows us to be able to have conversations differently. And for some people that's gonna include lots of drawing. Maybe it's gonna include some art kinds of work. Maybe it's gonna include some journaling and writing. It might inc inc uh, include tears and all tears carry toxins. Right. And so just that releasing out of our system, whether we know what we're releasing or not, yes. um, just that space of being available to listen, to hear, to be. Yes. So for yeah. me, that space is being outside, right? Gardening, working in the dirt. Mm -hmm. I, just, I, um, I can sit still. I really can. <laughs> However, <laughs> I do find that if I'm out and doing and moving my body to some degree, yeah. it seems to be a better movement of thought or of energy or of conversation, perhaps. Yeah. And I don't know if you find that to be true or not. Absolutely, Sarah. I find that it, I've realized this and I didn't always know this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, early on in uh, in life, because I'm a go getter, I'm, I move a while. I, I have tons of energy. And you I, do. Let me tell you, like, <laughs> girl, sit down, <laughs> sit down, girl. Um, but I, but 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 I learned this the hard way because mm -hmm. I realized that I had seen my mother. You know, you you model what many times what your the adults around you were doing. My mother was a single mom. Well, she's married, but my my dad had come to America early on since I was three. So I had seen my mother juggling different things to raise eight children. And she, I never seen my mother sitting down. Right. Never. She she only rested when she had to, which was bedtime. Right. So for me, I emulated that. Mm -hmm. I became a busy, busy body. Mm -hmm. In that, I never gave spirit enough time to do deep healing. I've always felt that connection with God, but that deep, deeper healing did not come until I started to practice um, aloneness. And it took me quite a bit of effort, mm -hmm. efforting to do that because naturally my body is used to moving, right? right? But, I, but I found that there's a good balance, right? Mm -hmm. uh, everything I'm learning now in life, mm -hmm. almost 50 and I'm learning it, <laughs> Yes, it's on in life, but yes. better late than never. But I'm learning there's a there's got to be a good balance between mm. being active and inactive. Yes, it, 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 it has to be a good balance. Yes. and so I find that I crave aloneness, and I've and I heard mm -hmm. aloneness to oneness. It's not seclusion. It's not like you don't like people. You, know, you don't want to go to parties. Every baby yeah. shower, you have to be there. And I remember it was difficult in my Haitian community. There were times mm -hmm. I had to say no. And, and people mm -hmm. didn't always understand why I was different, why I couldn't stay in a baby shower for five hours while nobody's celebrating the baby. I'm like, peace out. <laughs> peace out. I all you go to a party, it's a birthday party. I'm like, where's the birthday boy or birthday girl? Right. People drinking and I'm not into that. Yeah. My sacredness comes first. And so, yes, mm. I, I realize there's going to be a good balance between that. And for me, movement, because my children, thank God, I'm free at last. My children are 25. 
19 and the 14 year old one is so independent i'm like you do this so i'm free so in my spare time i go to nature i go for walks yes and and i move my body Mm -hmm. i dance um and and sarah i i see how they are both equally important Mm -hmm. that that you know physical activity mm-hmm. or drawing i love to draw yes i would say god in me because child if i don't call the spirit i don't know what i'm doing um, <laughs> i love to draw i love to journal and um I, I used to like a lot of house cleaning but i realized it was a, it was an emotional wound that was doing that <sighs> it was an emotional wound that that will not leave me alone. That's another topic for another time. But yes. the busy body, I noticed that it was uh, uh, it was a wound that was mm-hmm. caused to clean everything. Yeah. Uh, but your girl is healed. <laughs> your <girl> is healed. <laughs> I I don't have that disease anymore. Let me tell you. Um, I can sit still and wait for the dishes later. You're fine. Yes. Uh, and yes. God first. My soul first. Yeah. Hmm. That would be a good balance. I agree. And Danielle, you brought up such a powerful word that I just want to spend a moment with the word disease. Yes. Because it is the root word of this is the word ease. Yes. And the prefix Mm -hmm. of it is the dis. Correct. And so for decades in my life, I thought that disease was it that when somebody or something was diseased, I have plants and if the plant got a disease that that was it for the plant. And when I finally learned that that was just a prefix that needed to be removed from the base word of ease, I began to look at everything differently. When my African violets didn't look so good, they were just experiencing something that they were moved, I could help them move towards ease, right? And then when things are in ease, the flow happens and maybe balance shows up as well, but that beautiful flow will happen. But when something is not in ease, um, I think of constriction. And again, there can be really good places in our lives to have constriction for a period of time, but then we want to be able to let it go as well, to be able to move back into the flow, to be able to move it back into ease as well. That's right. And so I really appreciate you using that word because mm-hmm. I think that's such an important one for us to take a moment just to, to look at and think about. I know you to be a spiritual coach. I know that you have um, helped me in my own process of coming back to a living relationship with the unseen, with the one that I call Papa. I love that. There are multiple different writings that talk about um, being quiet on a, on, um, and being at, at ease in a place with a being that you can lean into, mm-hmm. knowing that they are eternal and that they are, for me, bigger and um omnipotent That's right. and can I, I don't I don't have to have all the answers. I don't have to do all of the stuff. I can choose to lean into that. That's right. And um I just got totally lost in my thought process of what that <laughs> looked like. So, um I just come back to this place of just being so grateful um in conversation in um, all the different pieces this morning. And I'm going to apologize real quickly here that okay. I turned my focus on this morning for some reason. Okay. So I just got a ding and I might get another one. And so okay. for everybody at home I who's listening in, I apologize for that. Um, but I, I did, I knew to do it and I tried. And this was the first morning that it didn't work of all <laughs> of that, so the first day. So kept back to our conversation. Um, in this space, Danielle, what is it? I know you to be a spiritual coach. How did you then determine that that's what you want to do? Because you're a teacher. You were an English teacher, um, teaching people English as a second language. You have all of these different skills, and yet you chose the path less trodden and possibly a path that not all your siblings and or your parents were like, whoo, yeah, we see that. Go for it and encouraged you. There's a possibility that maybe in your experience that some people were like, hmm, 
<laughs> so how did you choose this path that's, that's so amazing? Thank you, Sarah. Well, to go back to the word this is, and I just absolutely love how you put that together. Mm. It's just the prefix this that had to be, yes. you know, uh, turn up or remove or eradicate it. And then yes. you go back to ease. Yes. Do you know, Sarah, since naturally when I hear, mm. this is how I know my soul has come to provide solutions mm. and, and awakening to people to what's possible. Yes. Besides conventional medicine and et cetera. Mm -hmm. Since I was the little child, Sarah, I I have never understood the word when people say it just didn't resonate. When people say this is it, there's no cure. Yeah. That bothered me. There was like this ang holy anger. Why would you accept that? Right. Why would you not think of other alternatives. Why would you believe that that's got to be it just because someone said this is so? Mm -hmm. So even in my own life, when things will come up or I'll go to the doctors mm -hmm. and there was one time that, you know, when I was dealing with refusing to let go of Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> when it was breaking up with you. Yes. <laughs> Please don't go. And it's like, girl, um, so I remember I kept eating, and at one point, my stomach, Sarah, my gut inflamed. There were times people thought I was six months pregnant. It was that bad. Yeah. And I remember doing all more different type of tests, and I was told that, well, you have um, inflammatory something, something. I don't remember the name because I was like, blah, 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 <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you done? Because I'm going to take care of myself. Yes. Um, you know, but I, I am a beautiful, <laughs> obedient child. Yes. Uh, because you think you have your white coat. I, I respect that. You do an incredible job. But my ultimate, my ultimate source mm -hmm. is telling me there's, there's alternative. So I've always, always known that mm -hmm. that's going to be the other way. I never, ever took a report and said, this is it. That's just mm -hmm. me personally. And I'll, and I'll pray and then resources will come to me. And when I hear people talk about that, I try to encourage them to, to change their belief system yes. and to look at what, what else might be possible. At least ask the questions. Right. And not accept a diagnosis and not accept that. So in my life, I naturally started to heal my body from, with various sicknesses, through fasting, through prayer, on my own nature. And in that, I, when I lost the 60 pounds, people naturally started to ask me, Danielle, what are you doing? What are you doing? Okay. When you will instruct people and you know, you they go back, some of them go back to their old habits. Um, and so naturally I just started to look into what, what, what else is there? What else is there? Maybe it's not in the conventional, you know, it's not, you know, it's not in the CVS pharmacy or Walgreens, right. but what else is there that can support yes. somebody's wellness? Mm -hmm. So I'm always researching and mm -hmm. educating myself what's best for me and how can I help other people? Yes. And then I started to be on this field. Mm -hmm. But so your other questions, I was supposed to be a medical doctor, you know, <laughs> that's that was my path, the path my parents had designed for me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't give it a try. I wanted to respect them. They brought me to America. They made the sacrifices. I get it. And I tried, Sarah. I, I was pre-med for three and a half years until I had to dissect a frog. That was the moment. That was it. That was my, I came back to myself. Yes. Said, no, 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 I'm not. <laughs> I can't do this. Yes. And I was, it's not for me. Yes. I've always known this, but that particular experience in the lab that day, I realized I can't do this. And of course, so um, so I switched to foreign languages and to this point, I don't think my, my poor mom, she just doesn't understand what I do. Mm -hmm. And I culturally, like, what is what is, what is a life coach? What, what do you do? Yeah. <laughs> I have that. It's not in their vocabulary. So right. every now and then I have to break it down. She doesn't yeah. have system that can accept it. So that's right. fine. So I'm definitely the black sheep of my family. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to the route 
that my family bloodline went through and and it's okay it took me it was painful criticism and you know all that thing. it's part of the journey right. it's part of the growth that uh, we are meant to experience mm -hmm. uh, but and i know this in my in my spiritual life coaching that mm -hmm. there are seven sarah mm -hmm. in my personal experience working with women and the women who are in my circle, what I've noticed is like, I've identified seven dis emotional diseases mm. that women carry in the atmospheric body. Yes. In the emotional body mm -hmm. and the physical body. Yes. And all of these three bodies, they work hands in hands. Yes. So when your belief system, right, mm -hmm. the disease begin to happen. Yeah. So this is a little map that I teach my clients. A painful event or something that happened, you 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 emotionally you react with it at a personal level. Yes. You make it personal, it's painful. When that event happened, you react. Mm -hmm. You give it a meaning. Mm -hmm. That meaning creates a belief. Right. And the belief then begins to create a personality. Yes. A personality. Yes. Maybe an insecure personality, mm. a jealous personality, mm -hmm. a codependent personality, mm -hmm. an anger mm -hmm. personality. So you begin to have this personality that then make your decision for you. Mm. That personality chooses chooses your part, life partner, who you will marry. Yes. That, that personality will choose um, your, your taste buds, what food you will eat. It just literally make your choices and decisions for you. Right. So when somebody comes to me, I take them to the a diagnostic questionnaire to begin to unveil what are those belief systems. Yes. And then a type, when I do a deeper healing session, I, 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 I help them remember, but is it the space of love we will call the power of God, the Holy Spirit, or depending on their level of spirituality, just pure, pure light. And then with that, we will go into the wound. Yes. Or the disease. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then from that, we heal the inner child. Mm. These people were in their Christ self or in their in the essence of love. How would that event be different? Right. We 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 heal the inner child, yes. and then we we change that limiting belief. Right. We begin to correct that belief. Yes. And then that personality then return back to its origin, authentic essence of love, yes. Yes. well being. A lot of forgiveness happened there. Yes. And then they can shape their life. Mm -hmm. and I help them identify specific wounds. That among those seven wounds, they affect different parts of the body. Yes. For example, for women, we tend to have a lot of resentment. Mm -hmm. And then that creates issues in the gut area, mm -hmm. issues in the reproductive system. Yes. And then we will go into those areas and then we will bless them. So we, we go to body love, body reconciliation, and body celebration. We do yes. dancing, and just to help people identify those wounds, mm -hmm. those emotional diseases yes. that are actually at the core of the experiences they are calling negative experiences. So, yeah. in a nutshell, I hope I answered your questions. Uh, Sarah. Oh, that was so. <laughs> Beautiful, Danielle, because I'm thinking again, and at points like that, I'm smiling over here about me this morning, moving the plant yeah, and that whole process, right? So this beautiful glass hand-painted bulb falls to the floor, and I have a decision to make about what I believe. Mm -hmm. Do I believe that I have done something wrong? It was a mistake. That's right. Right? Yes, there is broken glass everywhere, but it wasn't purposeful. And so I have a decision not just for what it means about the glass bulb. I have a decision for what it means about my day. In the next 10 minutes, I have a decision about what it means about who I am as a person. Am I a clumsy person? No. I just didn't notice that that happened to be there and that mm -hmm. I was 
um, doing something that I knew I needed to do. That's and right. so it was truly an accident. So then do I shame myself, okay. belittle myself That's for right. an accident, or am I able to move into a place of grace and say, this is what happened. I was able to clean it up. There was plenty of time to do that. Yeah. Even time to vacuum the floor for all the little tiny shards. Everything is fine, right? Yeah. And so coming to that place of, and the interesting place for me also with this particular thing, I'm going to digress just for a moment here, okay. is that we have moved on to the homestead and there have been five, not one, not three, but five different households of things on the property. And we have literally removed over the last four months, five months, three tons of stuff off the property. And the way I know this is because when you go to get to get rid of the stuff, they weigh your truck going in, they weigh your truck coming yeah. out, Isn't that right? And so that's how I know how much we, we've removed. And yesterday, again, I was thinking, is there a way for us to have more space and to just wondering, is there a way to better organize, to better uh, honor the things that need to be held on to? I don't want to be living in a museum and, and we're not. <laughs> uh, but, but also, is there a way for us to be, again, honoring the people who have gone before us, the things that they have left for us? and still bring in this new energy of change and creativity and all the things that my husband and I are. And this morning when it fell to the floor, I had a little part of me that laughed and said, well, that's one way to create more space, <laughs> right? <laughs> so these conversations that are all happening, these different entities that all have voices <laughs> about um, these different pieces that are going on in our lives. Uh, I so appreciate you sharing these two excuse me, these tools so clearly and so deeply yeah. about yeah. how you go in. Cause I believe that one of the, one of my markers about if I am living um, much more in the identity of what other people think that I am, like going back to the beginning of our conversation about, you know, culture and race and where mm -hmm. in the world and what our primary language is and all of those pieces Am I living under the blanket of that, clothed inside of that, mm -hmm. or am I choosing to be in a place of creativity? I believe that that Papa is so creative, that one of the ways that we are like the infinite is right. that we are creative beings. That's right. And so that's one of my temperature readings about, am I in a space of being creative, or am I in a rut of, this is how we do it, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one for me. How do you kind of gauge where you are in that kind of space? Or what do you notice inside of your body of, ooh, I've been at the birthday party this many hours and it's now time for me to go, just as an example, but could be for anything at all. Yeah. What, what's happening for you? Literally, my soul cringes. Mm. Like, I will feel like you can't, this time, like something comes over me and, and, and it's just, it's, I, it's, I can either obey it. And I do believe that we all get it, Sarah. Yes. yes. But because we have different coping mechanism and we have people pleasing that we haven't dealt with yes. and wanting to have, please everybody, having that good girl, good image. What if, what, like for me, it was difficult at times in the beginning when I had to leave a party, for example. Right. Because then I had to deal with all of my siblings. What's wrong with you? Then right. for me, okay, I would rather just stay. Should I just stay so that way I don't have to deal with them? Or, well, what would that cost me? Right. What would that cost me if I don't obey yeah. my authenticity? So, yeah, it definitely came with its own challenges. And, and of mm -hmm. course, you have to navigate with, okay, it's okay if people don't understand your journey. Right. You understand? And right. why you have to do certain things. It took me a little bit of time because people pleasing for me, um, I, and I teach that was one of the symptoms of the disease of um, sexual abuse. Yes. I wanted so much, so much to be accepted. Yes. And therefore, I wouldn't, I can even anticipate what your needs are mm -hmm. and fulfill them before you even know you need it. That's how bad my people pleasing was. Yes. You understand, Sarah? So I, I came do. a long way. Yes. But Besides that, besides knowing, for me, it's just my soul is, is my soul is feeling uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. 
and therefore I know, and I know this, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm supposed to go to a certain place, I'll project myself ahead, I'll send my energy there. Yes. It doesn't feel right, then I wait. Yes. So we, we have this ability. It's, it's just that many of us, we are afraid of other people, mm -hmm. what they might say, or we are afraid, who will I, what will I be if I don't please? Because that's the personality that I know. Right. If you're a people pleaser, what would I do? It's okay. Do nothing. But it took me a little while. Yes. And so for me, it's just listening. Listening. Mm. And the word that came to me was the word alienation. And again, coming back to words, the yeah. etymology of that, the alien part of it is something that we talk about, you know, are there aliens or not? But right. if somebody says to me, you're an alien, I feel like I'm not part of right? Mm -hmm. I am outside of, and that feels, it can feel rejecting or the word, the word is not warm to me. It's not a encompassing. It's not a comforting word. It's not a, Ooh, you know, come be part of us. It's a, you know, there's something here that's not quite right. And I think that part of this journey that we have is where are we going to source our energy? Where are we going to source our creativity? If I go to the places of being compliant mm -hmm. for the sake of not ruffling any feathers, the sake of just going along, am I in that space actually receiving energy out of that? Or am I just existing? Mm -hmm. If I push into spirit and I am following spirit, am I then in the space of rejoicing, of expanding, of moving into creativity. And maybe it's all encompassing, not rejecting any of that, mm -hmm. but finding our own voice, finding the vibration of what we're here to do right now, to be able to be in the spaces where other people may be feeling like they can't see anything different, that they feel like that they are living in darkness, mm -hmm. that they have had trauma happen in their lives, and that right. they are they are inside of that and then being able to show that you can choose a different path, that you can choose to have different kinds of eyes that see things differently, that have a different perspective. And I do think, Sarah, as, as, as we evolve, right, mm -hmm. uh, and there are different levels of growth. It all depends on how much you want to invest. True. And, and how many things you're willing to give up because, you know, we all had traumas. Everyone. I have yet to meet someone, unless you're an angel, a divine being, okay? Yeah. But as long as you're a human being in the human body, raised by not so perfect, right? A parent. Yeah. I mean, yeah, none of us knew. Yeah. Everybody had a trauma. But I think how we've, how we've handled that, mm -hmm. you see how you, that, when that this book, right? Mm -hmm. book, you gave it a different meaning. Yes. Not all of us had, um, I mean, many times parents will step in and they try their best, correct? Right. And many other times there weren't an adult that will help you give that experience a different meaning. Right. So as a little child, you gave it the meaning. Yeah. And usually you just, you give it a meaning, I'm not good enough. Mm. I'm not lovable. Yeah. I'm not important. Mm -hmm. This only happens to me, mm. you know? we form this uh, meaning. And because of that, you believe, well, I will never have a child. Mm -hmm. This will be, I will never marry, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so on and so forth. We form so these beliefs, all men are like that. All men from this culture is like that and so on. So we form these beliefs and then just because you move on in life, and I can give you a quick example, Sarah, my my um what had happened to me on campus in college mm -hmm. at at the age of 19 yeah. i literally i did life i i excelled in my courses i traveled to spain yes. i had studied. i even had i believe i had all three children that was in my 33 mm -hmm. i had i had that was my coping mechanism yes. it didn't happen so just because I ignored this, and that's the way I dealt with it as a 19-year-old, it didn't happen. Yeah. 
33, so I don't know. I, I, let me see, how, many, how what is that? 14 years or so later. Yes, thank you for your good math. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was about to say 17 years, praise God, hallelujah. One of us do math. And so 14 years later, did, did came out. Yeah. It, it, it came out and I had done spiritual work. I had all, all along. Yes. I was yes. on the path. I, I was even ministering to churches, youth yes. groups, speaking at events. Girl, I was so wounded. So I was having a conversation with, with my husband. Mm -hmm. We had been married by that maybe 11, 12 years. Mm -hmm. And we had finished doing a fast, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I said, honey, I got to tell you something. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what? <laughs> Because usually I bring kids stuff. Honey, Gemma is going to the that. So he was like, whoa. But okay, honey, go ahead. And I said, babe, when I was 19, mm -hmm. junior, what is it? I think he was in his junior year. I was a freshman. Mm -hmm. And I told him everything happened. And that was the first time I told a living soul, Sarah. Yes. yes. First time. So first. I'm saying this to say, we are so powerful mm. that we can conceal something so painful and yeah. other things too. Right. But I think when we are at some point, if you if you're going to evolve, mm -hmm. if you're going to to attend, if that's your goal to attend yes. your highest evolution in this lifetime, yes, and give your highest service, which has been my goal my intention right and then everything has to come on the surface yes it does and i realized after i had done that um confession mm. it, it, it got brought the holy spirit literally brought i watched myself doing it and i knew it was not by my own power yes and uh, in that my growth accelerated the vulnerability mm. I was, you know, just being open to spirit, bringing it to light. Yes. Like now I gave it access for healings. Yes. For deeper healing. Mm. And so I recognize that it ultimately is going to be what is your goal? Yes. What is your highest aim? Mm. And what is it that, how is that going to benefit people in your life. Yes. It doesn't even have to be like you on a world stage, but people in your life. Yes. Workplace, mm. family members, people you love. How would that benefit other people? Yes. Had you been your, the best of yourself? <sighs> exactly. And I think for me, because of that, Sarah, that, that, that kept taking me into a place of deeper, awakening more of my authentic self mm -hmm. and naturally being creative. I mean, I'm tapping into things that I never thought I could do in this lifetime. Yes. Like knitting. I'm like knitting, crocheting. I'm like, what is this? It's not even my culture like that. But yeah, I'm sculpting all of it. Yes. Yes. Creative writing, all mm -hmm. of that. Because I gave, when I, when I started to heal that wound, I gave my inner self, okay, permission to flow through me. And yes. that's infinite spirit. I can't, I can't put it into a box. That's why I could never ever be in a corporate America inside a cubicle. I, I tried, not that I didn't try, <laughs> trust me. Yes. I tried. You know, because the spirit that is your essence is, you, you can limit it, but it's, only, it's illimitable. Is that what they say, Sarah? You speak yes. English, <laughs> illimitable. Yes. Yes. Um, and the more you allow it, mm -hmm. wow, you will see magic in your life. That is so true. And Danielle, I want to thank you for sharing so deeply. We are running close to being out of time. I just want to thank you so much for your vulnerability mm -hmm. and for the power of what you choose to do, the way that you show up in people's lives and being the beautiful essence that you are. I am just so grateful. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you.